Welcome back for another video. Um, as you can see, the area of the loft that I boarded in part 2C is complete. And now I'm moving on to uh, this final quarter. This is quite a complex area because we've got a loft access and a lot of wiring to work around. Uh, as you can see, I've already pre-cut my uh, outer wall packers. Uh, the, the 20 mil packers in case you didn't know and I've also uh, pre-cut the um, floor joist to go under the eaves. This uh, whiteboard on the right um, has got a number of things attached to it like a network switch, an aerial multiplexer. The plan is to get a couple of joists um, inserted over at the far end of the loft access. I'm using the same method as I used in um, video 2C um, where I've inserted the joist underneath the eaves and then I'm just trimming off the other end of the joist just to make it level with the uh, floor that I've already uh, got in place. Um, and then I'll use a, a piece of batten on top of each joist just to bring each one up to the same level as the floor. Okay, we've got the first joist in place and threaded it under all these electric cables. Um, you can see it's obviously uh, level, which is good. Just setting the camera down and we're going to fix it into the uh, central packer plate and also just uh, attach it to the other joist coming across from the from the other wall, uh, just to give it some stability. Here I'm feeding in the, the next two floor joists that are going to sit nearest uh, to the end of the hatch opening. Um, as you can see, I'm sistering them together because uh, we're going to place a trimmer between uh, these two uh, joists and the two, at the, the two that are sistered at the other end of the hatch. Um, and then we're just going to run the, the joists that sit around the hatch back to the eaves um, supported off of the off this uh, trimmer. So here I'm just uh, got some uh, threaded uh, rod and I'm just uh, bolting the, the two joists uh, together. This gives it a lot more uh, rigidity. Just see that I've just drilled the hole. Some threaded rod Rod. Just tapping the rod through and then a, a washer and a nut on both sides. Next up, you can see that I've added um, some battens to the top of the two sister joists. Um, and I'm just getting ready to just notch out uh, a small small area for the uh, joist hangers uh, for the trimmer that's going to run parallel with the longer side of the, of the hatch. So I'm just marking out with a chisel uh, where the uh, the metal part, the hanger, will be bent over and uh, secured down. And then I'm just going to chisel it out using the using the hammer. Only need to take 
um, and you need to go down a couple of mil. Uh, it's a bit time consuming this, especially when you're in a cramped, cramped conditions. Now I'm just securing the joist hanger into place. Um, we're going to have some 4x2 uh, uh, trimmers um, sistered together um, to provide uh, extra support. As you can see I'm just hammering over the, uh, the legs of the joist hanger. A little bit more just to uh, cut out. As you can see, the hatch area has got quite a lot going on. Um, on the right hand side, we're going to run a double trimmer along here. And then we're also going to run a double trimmer along this side. We we'll probably have to do two double trimmers because of the way the uh, ceiling rafters are located. As you can see I've got the joist hanger in place uh, for the first double trimmer that's going to go in. Um, as I said before these are 4 by 2s so that they sit above the, uh, the ceiling rafters and don't touch. So they sit about 5mm above the ceiling rafters. And then we're going to put another joist hanger here um, so that we can avoid this trimmer uh, on the ceiling. And then we're going to run the joists back to the eaves uh, from this trimmer. Here I'm just slotting our double uh, assisted trimmers uh, into place into the uh, joist hangers. For some reason I made the joist hanger a little bit of a, a tight fit so I had uh, trouble uh, squeezing in uh, both lengths of 4 by 2 but um, I managed to get there in the end.
here you can see I've got both sets of trimmers in. Um, they've both got uh, bolts bolting them together and also uh, noggins uh, for support in between. There's the bolts going through. And then we've got the noggins uh, screwed in from either side. Um, this made a very uh, solid uh, structure. Um, just notice I've got that uh, right angle uh, Ryobi uh, drill there. Uh, very useful um, for getting in between uh, floor joist and tight spaces. So you can see the uh, probably uh, around about 10 mil space uh, underneath this trimmer and the uh, ceiling rafter. Here you can see that I'm putting in the first uh, joist that's going to be attached to our, our trimmer. Um, I've already uh, put the joist hanger in place um, and then just slotted our joist in. I've now dismantled the media board and worked my way across with the other joist. I've now got to support the hip purling but before I can do that I've got to put across this 4x2 uh, that runs across all the uh, floor joist and then I've got to uh, put supports down before I can take out uh, this uh, diagonal support which is the only thing um, supporting this hip purling. As you can see it comes all the way from the purling down into the uh, central wall support. As I have demonstrated in previous videos, uh, these purling supports are going to have a bird mouth at one end. Um, I've made these uh, using my angulizer uh, measuring tool um, that's quite invaluable for, for doing this if you want to get a, a nice, uh, tight and accurate fit. I'll post a link to this tool in the description uh, for the video. If you're going to be doing a lot of uh, crawling around in a loft and tight spaces, I can't recommend these uh, DeWalt knee pads enough. Uh, they've really saved my, my knees in the overall scheme of things. Here I've got in my first uh, two um, hip purling supports um, and I've just reattached the media board and the aerial multiplexer and the network uh, cabling. And now I'm just fitting the other uh, supports along the purlin um, before I remove the diagonal support. Here you can see I've got the other assisted uh, floor joists uh, in place along the right hand side of the hatch. Obviously, uh, bolting uh, these two four by twos together. Now, just a quick uh, recap. Um, here we've got the double uh, floor joist running all the way to the eave. And then we've got the uh, four by two uh, sisted trimmer running all the way to the uh, double floor joist at the end here. 
which has sistered again all the way to the eave and another uh, four by two trimmer running back across um, again sistered and then we've got our floor joists running off this trimmer and all the way back to the eaves This floor joist obviously goes all the way back to the central supporting wall and runs all the way to the eave. And then here you can see the trimmer that runs along the, uh, around the edge of the hatch and goes all the way to the floor joist at the end there. And then we've got uh, assisted noggins in between that are all uh, bolted through. As you can see, all the all the gaps have been, uh, been filled in with uh, insulation as well. Okay, we're now into the final stages of uh, boarding out. Um, as you can see, I've cut the uh, first board around the first part of the loft access. Uh, I did this by uh, laying the board, or slotting the board into the tongue and groove that was already down, um, and then laying the board on top of the hatch, and then just scribing with a pencil. Um, the exact opening uh, that way you get an accurate an accurate cut here I'm using my uh, Ryobi uh, multi-tool uh, just to cut some uh, sections out of the floor that I've put down um, so that I can slot in some additional uh, purling supports. Um, I did this because um, I did it this way because the the boards uh, wouldn't. I wasn't able to uh, slot them in uh, between the supports like I did on the the other side of the the loft. So I made sure that the supports uh, were going to be resting on a uh, floor joist. Uh, below um, before I put the board down um, so I know exactly uh, where to cut again this these are this is another tool that's uh, really gets you out of some uh, situations or just makes life uh, that little bit easier um, I've included the, the link to the tool in the description below as well just to make it easier for you to find Here you can see the trimmer sitting directly below the hole. Um, this is where our purlin support is going to slot into and then we just tap it underneath the purlin and secure it to the purlin. We're going to cut another hole for another purlin support uh, directly here as well. Okay so that's it, here's the uh, finished loft, all the boardings down, all the purlin supports are in. Here you can just see the two purling supports that I put in previously. As you can see, it's cut flush all the way around the loft opening hatch. Hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, please check out the other videos in the series and don't forget to subscribe to the channel and like the video. Thanks for watching.